Who said they had slicks? We got a bunch of them. Um, okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about how to move your slick to our newer platform, the Compact Logics, which you've probably all heard of already, I would imagine. Um, we have an example here of a slick 503 connected to an old panel view standard. Um, or Slick 505 connected Ethernet to a panel view plus. And we want to move that to the Compact Logics. And in this example, we're going to use the 1747A NTR, which is a new product. Is that the release yet? Um, yes. When? Now. It's out. OK, so there's a couple different paths you can take. Um, you can do all in once. We talked about risk mitigation. Doing everything at once is not necessarily your best option. Um, another way you could go to try to mitigate some of that risk is go from the select 504 to the 505. If you're not really changing a the program, then you can do your panel views one at a time, and then go to the AENTR. Has anybody ever done a conversion from a slick to a control logics or compact logics in here? The code conversion, I mean, you can actually use, there's actually a conversion tool that the only downside of it is your tags end up being B30, T4, you know, your tags don't have real <coughs> usable names but it works quite effectively. So I'm saying that from direct experience. I was a little, uh, little concerned when I used it. I did it on a, uh, on a, uh, a slick system and um, had minimal, uh, minimal issues with it. And, and when there's an issue in translating the code from uh, the, the slick code to the, the, lo the uh, control logics code or the compact logics code, it will very clearly inform you when there's something that is not translating properly. That, you know, it, it gives you an idea of where the areas that you really need to focus on are, so. Matt already talked about this a little bit over here on the board. Different uh, life cycle steps. And right now I would say the slick is probably in here as a mature product because um, we have a replacement for it. So I wouldn't be too surprised if at some point in the semi-near future it does go silver. Seems the final time. Absolutely. And, and we don't have a date for that yet, but like I said, at some point in the near future, is that going to be one year? Is it going to be five years? I don't know, but it's definitely coming. Um, you can check your silver series date. Well, or anything that is in the Silver Series program by going to the website. If you go in the upper right hand corner in the search bar, just type in silver. It's going to pop up as one of the first items. Take you to this page, put in the product ID or a portion of a product ID. So if you go and type in 1747, you will see some of the older slick processors come up. Um, and that'll tell you when the date is going to be or was. That's the discontinued date. That's not the date it's going to enter silver. That's the date it's going to exit silver. So that's the date it goes from here to discontinue. Um, these are some of the tools that we have to help you with your migration. Um, the new Compact Logic processors, the AENTR. Um, Install base evaluation, which is a Rockwell service. Craig's going to touch on that a little bit later. Um, integrated architecture builder. I think you've used this. Has anybody else used that? Yeah. That's a free tool. You can download it from Rockwell's website. You can go into the program and build a control system. And it's, a, it's an awesome tool. I use it on a lot of projects because it doesn't let you forget the little parts like the wiring arms. It's going to add that to the build materials when you put the I.O. card in. Um, or like an end cap for a compact logic processor. It automatically adds that in when you need it. 
um, proposal works. That's you can actually export your control system from Integrated Architecture Builder into Proposal Works and get list pricing on what the control system would cost. We can get you a price sheet that you can put in there that gives you your pricing. So you can design your system and get a cost on your system. Um, and then obviously we're here to help you if you need any help in that process. Um, we do have code conversion services through Rockwell. Um, we also have the code converter that Matt's talking about, which I'll talk a little bit about in a minute. Um, okay, so the new Compact Logics processor is about twice as powerful as the original Compact Logics processor, which is significantly more powerful than your current SLIC. Um, it has dual Ethernet ports built into it, um, it's still one IP address but it can connect the two devices. Um, it has a USB port, which is a lot faster than the serial port. Does anybody have serial ports on their uh, new uh, laptops? <laughs> anybody? On, the new, on your new laptop? Well, that's what I have. <laughs> yeah. well, you, you can get a serial port, but if you don't ask for it, you're not going to. No, they, they won't, because they try to get a new one of this, because no more serial port. No more at all? Uh, from no, Dell, no, anyway. Wow. Okay. Um, so the USB port is a nice feature. You could actually connect to it without having to have an Ethernet connection. Probably, probably do on your new laptop. Um, well, we use the conversion right now. Right. I actually use the USB conversion. Right. Yeah, and, and if you do have a laptop without a serial port, Rockwell does make a serial converter that they do support. Um, there are some other ones on the market that are made by third parties, but they're not supported by Rockwell. So you're not if you have trouble with it, call and text support, they're not gonna they're not gonna be able to help you. But if you use if they're using theirs, they can help you through any problems that you have. Um, the new contact logic processors don't have batteries in them. They have a capacitor that has the same function as a battery but you don't have to, have to worry about the battery going bad. What's that? Oh, they do. The three series. Um, the other ones, by the way, the, the uh, L2s and the L3s, um, I would put them into the, uh, the mature yeah. right now. So if I were going to do system and I could, and I could theoretically uh, go to version 20 of Logix, that's the way to go right now. So those would be, those, those at this point, those would be on the borderline between new and prime, those three processors, so. Um, and they have an SD card for program backup, um, as opposed to the older compact flash that we had in the, in the three series, and nothing at all in the two series. So now the, the one series, the two series, and the three series all have that SD card, and it comes with an SD card. Can I, can you back up one? Yeah. Um, I want you to look at the bottom. Okay, um, so has anybody ever used Circos and uh, Integrated Motion? A lot of you guys have. Um, that's built right into the, uh, some of these controllers. There, you have to have the, uh, what is it, the, uh, the M version? The M version of them. But these controllers all support, these new controllers, the M versions of them support fully integrated motion control. Right, anywhere from two to 16 axes, depending on which one you get. At significantly lower cost than uh, what we did a year ago. Right. And it's all on Ethernet. Yep. So you're not having to deal with circos. Okay, this is the 1747AENTR adapter that we quickly talked about before. What this is going to do is you literally pull out your slick processor and you put this in the same slot or you pull out your ASB adapter or your control net adapter and you put this in the same slot zero. Um, now your slick I.O. rack is a distributed I.O. for an integrated architecture system. So that can be with a compact logic <coughs> or a control logic. Um, you don't have to replace all the I.O immediately. At some point that's going to become 
discontinued also, so you probably want to eventually, but you don't have to do it all at once. You can mitigate your risk by doing a phased approach. Because um, the pain is pulling out the, is, is the wiring, typically, right? I mean, the code can be painful, but the, the wiring is where if you're going to lose a lot of time on your weekend, rip and replace, go ahead. Right. Um, it's going to be supported in version 20 of RS Logix 5000. Um, it's going to support device level ring, star, or linear network. Uh, it has a cell based evaluation, which I'm going to skip. I'm going to talk about that a little later. Um, this is the integrated architecture builder. Remember, I was telling you you could design your control system in this. Well, there is one feature in here that allows you to, you can actually put in your current slick system and tell it, all right, convert it, and it's going to tell you. This is the contact logic that is equivalent to your slick. It's going to give you the whole bill of materials of what, what you would need to convert the system. And this is the code translation program that Matt had spoke a little bit about earlier. Um, you can convert the PLC5 program or the slick or micro with this. Um, it's going to bring it into the RS Logix 5000. It's going to throw warnings and errors if there's anything that uh, doesn't convert properly. Now, having said that, I do recommend that you do, you know, a full test and validation of the system to make sure everything is performing as desired before you put it into production. Um, you know, do your due diligence, but it's going to get you at least 95% of the way there, save you a lot of labor. Now, just, a, just one more thought. Um, you know, if you're going from a slick to one of these new processors, um, let's say for some reason um, some functionality of your, sl your SLC system was dependent on scan time and there are applications like that out there and all of a sudden your scan time you know goes from uh, you know a, a Yugo to a Lamborghini um, you, there, there could potentially be issues there so just something to be aware of yeah and that's that's a good point and another good point that you reminded me of too is the, the way that the code is handled in RS Logix 5000 is a little bit different than 5 and 500. In 5 and 500, you have a very specific sequence where it reads your inputs, it runs your code, and then it writes your outputs. In, in RS Logix 5000, it's not as clean cut as that. It's kind of doing all that stuff all at the same time, which is one of the reasons why the processor is more efficient. But what it does is, if your code relies on the input being read and then all the code being performed before the output's written, then you potentially have a problem at least some of the time. Um, and that's why I say do your due diligence, do your testing, you know, make sure you understand the code and that you're not going to put yourself in an unexpected situation. At some point today, you're going to go through some of the things to look for that the conversion tool doesn't. Um, I don't think specifically, but we can talk about that. Um, so again, this is, you know, let's take your slick processors and move them over to Compact Logics. And uh, there's some tools on the website. Uh, yeah, what if you have a panel view connected to your slick? How does that work into this? Migration. Like through a serial port? <coughs> right. Right. Okay. So uh, ideally you're going to move your panel view to a panel view plus on Ethernet. Well, so you'd have to swap out <coughs> the panel view also is what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, because the new ones don't have serial ports, so. Right. All right. Um, next up we have Matt again. We'll talk about motion. Yeah. There are some options for serial on Atlanta panel views, so it could be, it's, you're going to have to rework the panel view anyway to talk to them. So it, there are some options there. And that would be one of the phases in your phase migration. You may not want to do that all at the same time. Just added, I'm just looking at added cost. <coughs> yeah. It could be your first phase, just move the panel view over. Right. 